I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. Yes, boys and girls, Miss Donna is here again today, and we're going to talk about, I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. Pastor Dick this morning talked a little bit about Judges and how the book of Judges in chapter 2 and how the parents and grandparents forgot to pass on God's love and his mercies to the next generation. And so they were for a whole generation lost. Boys and girls, we're going to learn why that's so important because we too are going to be in Judges, but we're going to go further into the book of Judges chapter 3. But before we do that, let's listen to Skittles and find out what's up. And let's pray. Lord, I just thank you for this day. I thank you, Lord, that we're able to gather here and just by online, by YouTube. Lord, help us to make right choices. Help us to listen well. Help us, Lord, to serve you. And remember that no matter our age, no matter our thoughts, no matter uh, how little or how big we are, you can use each one of us in a special way. We love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. What's up, everybody? It's me, BSKI to the double T L E L. Skittles in the hizzy, and I'm ready to tell you what's up. Today, we are talking about how we can do big things for God. Big! So anytime today that somebody asks you, what's up, you tell them. I know God can use me to do big things for him. It don't matter who you are. Everybody can do big things for God. So anytime, I mean anytime somebody asks you, what's up, you tell them. I know God can use me to do big things for him. And that's what's up. I got a rainbow of flavor. And I'm living it for my savior. Skin out, baby. Yeah. Okay, boys and girls, what's up? I know God can use me to do big things for him. That's right. God can use you, boys and girls. Writer, he can use you. Brigitte, he can use you. Emma, Brisa, all of you guys, God can use you to do big things for him. Let's listen to what Noah Lott says. I know it sounds crazy, but the strongest muscle in the human body is the tongue. I know it sounds crazy, but your ears can sleep more or your wife live your scared than whatever you're not. I know it sounds crazy, but in your life, does it produce enough sex to fill two swimming pools? I know it sounds crazy, but your spirit is usually travel faster than a hundred miles per hour. I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. You might have found out something even crazier today on... I know it sounds crazy, but it's true! Likely to be used by God. He could have come up with as many excuses. 
excuses for why he would never do something big for God. But Ahab did do something incredible for God. And we're going to learn all about it in today's Bible lesson, Ehud and the Fat King. Now you heard me right, the Fat King. Today we're going to learn about one of the fattest people in the entire Bible. I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. Very, very true. <laughs> I can't get in. sounds crazy, but it is true, boys and girls. We're looking at the book of Judges, chapter 3, and time kind of towards the end of chapter 3. We're going to start around verse 12. You know, boys and girls, it says right there in verse 12, once again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. Once again, the Israelites did the wrong thing. You know, it seemed like the Israelites would do really, really well, really good, love the Lord, and then boom, they make bad choices, do evil, and then back up again, do really, really good, and then boom. It's just like you and me. Sometimes we do really, really good, and we love the Lord, and we go to church, and we pray, and we sing, and then boom. We make those bad choices. I don't want to go to church. I don't want to pray. I don't want to read my Bible. But God still loves us. What we need to do is tattle on ourselves. Say, God, I'm sorry. I know I've had a rotten attitude. Or I know I've said things that I shouldn't have said. Or, Please forgive me. And he will. Well, boys and girls, it says here in Scripture that, again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. And it's one of the craziest stories we've read. It said that um, God allowed a wicked king to rule over them. He was a very mean guy. And the Bible also says in Judges chapter 3, and it's verse 17, he was very fat. He had a lot of extra tissue, okay? He was a big guy, but he was a fat guy. There was lots of blubber there. And so, boys and girls, you need to remember that as we go on with the rest of the Bible story. And this is really true. Well, the Israelites realized they needed to turn back to God. They realized they had done wrong. And so they did. They turned back to God and they cried out to him for help. Well, like many times before, God lifted up someone to rescue them. And it usually is God uses the least expected person to help out. When the world looks at you and says, oh, you're too little or, oh, you're, you don't have enough smarts or whatever. God works his miracle through you. So anyways, boys and girls, Ehud was the man that God had chosen. He wasn't a very likely warrior because you see, Ehud was left-handed. Now you think, hello, Miss Donna, what difference does that make? Well, back in Bible times, it made a lot of difference. You see, people back then thought that left-handed people could not be warriors because warriors were all right-handed. So if you couldn't use your right hand to fight in a battle, well, then you weren't a warrior. And so they were like, you're kidding, right? This is the guy we're going to send? All right. So they sent Ehud to take their tax money to the king. Now, they didn't expect anything good to come out of it, but okay, if that's who God wanted to send. Well, you know, boys and girls, God can use anybody who is willing. 
And so Ehud strapped a dagger to his right thigh. Now, the reason he did this was because he was left-handed. When he arrived, the king's security guards didn't think to check there because they realized that any real warrior would be right-handed. And if they were going to have anything, it'd be on the left side. But Ehud was left-handed, and so he put it on the right. So Ehud brought the tax money to the king just like he was supposed to. But then he told the king, I have a secret message for you. Well, the king was like, secret message? Okay, guards, out of here. Everybody leave but Ehud. And so once the king told his guards to leave the room so Ehud could tell him the secret, Ehud pulled out his dagger and stabbed the king right in his belly. That's what he had to do in order to deliver the Israelites from this mean king. The king was leader of the enemy's armies. So Ehud plunged his dagger into his belly. The king was so fat that the dagger went so far into his belly that the actual handle disappeared from sight. Ehud escaped going down from the king's throne by climbing down the latrine tower. Now, that's where the king would use as his restroom, the latrine tower. Ehud went back to the Israelites and told them that he had king, killed the king. And now that the fat king was dead, Ehud led the Israelite army into battle against their enemies and defeated them, boys and girls. God used someone who people thought was unusable to win the battle. God can use you to win the battle as well. It just goes to show that anyone can be used by God if they're willing to follow and obey him. And that's exactly the point that we need to get from our lesson today, boys and girls. We're going to listen to the librarian regarding our power verse. I know it sounds crazy, but it's uh, so, so, so much for our librarian, right? Well, listen, here's our power verse. It's found in Philippians 4.13. For I can do everything with the help of Christ who gives me the strength I need. Philippians 4.13. Boys and girls, we can do everything with the help of Christ, who gives us the strength that we need. Ehud could do anything with the strength of Christ. He couldn't do it on his own power. I can't do everything on my own power, but we can do what God would have us do in the strength of Christ, Philippians 4, 3. You know, boys and girls, today we've learned something very important about the from the story of Ehud. He was something who many people thought was pretty useless as a warrior, but God can use him. It's sad, but many people make decisions that are wrong about others. They look at someone else and say things like, ah, oh, she's not smart enough to do that, or, well, I know he likes to sing, but he's not talented enough, or, she is so ugly. He is so weak. They make decisions about other people's worth based on the silliest things. Well, here's the good news, boys and girls. It doesn't matter what other people say about you. 
It really doesn't. People said that David was too young to fight Goliath, but he did. People said that Abraham was too old to have a child, but he did. People said that Saul would never become a Christian. Yeah, but we learned he did, didn't he, boys and girls? People said that Jesus would never rise from the dead, but he did, praise God. People say a lot of things, and most of the things that they say are wrong. Maybe you have somebody at school that tells you that you're worthless. You're not going to amount to anything. Well, they are wrong. Maybe someone in your family is constantly telling you that you will never amount to anything. Well, boys and girls, they're wrong. It doesn't matter what other people say about you. But you know, for some people, it's not what other people say that holds them back. For some, it's what they think about themselves that stand in their way. Some people look in the mirror and they think, oh, I am so ugly. I could never have a friend. You're wrong. I am so worthless. I can do nothing right. You're wrong. They don't think they have what it takes to do anything for God. Well, the good news is it doesn't matter what others think and it doesn't matter what you think about yourself, boys and girls. Some people have so many thoughts about themselves that just aren't true. They think they're worthless, weak, stupid, lame, ugly, these are thoughts that are hurtful and dangerous, and they are not true, boys and girls. Ehud may have had some of those same thoughts, but if he did, he didn't give in to them. No way. Instead, he chose to believe that God could use him no matter what. Sometimes our thoughts can lie to us. So instead of paying attention to what others say about us or what we think, we should always remember, it doesn't matter what others say about you or what you think about yourself. What matters is what God knows about you, boys and girls. God knows all about you. He created you. He knows what he has planned for you. Nothing is a surprise to God. The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 17, or verse 7, it says, For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. God sees how amazing you are. He created you. It's time to believe that God can use you to do big things for him. Boys and girls, God created you. He created you because he loves you and he wants you to be with him forever and ever and ever in heaven. But because of that sin, the things we say, think, and do that, that doesn't please God, that sin keeps us away from him. Boys and girls, God's word says that all have sin. You have sin. I have sin. Jesus Christ died on the cross. He took the punishment for our sin. And he didn't stay dead. He rose again. And he tells us in his word that if we admit our sin, believe, know in our heart that Jesus died and rose again for me, for you, then we become his child and we can be with him forever. And if we make a bad choice, all we have to do is say, God, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. And he will. Boys and girls, God created you. He loves you. He doesn't create junk. You are special in his eyes. Let's pray, Lord, or boys and girls, asking the Lord to help us as we struggle with some of those thoughts. 
Lord, I pray right now for those boys and girls that have been struggling with who they are. I pray, Lord, that they won't listen to what others say about them. I pray that, that you, Lord, will help them to deal with their own bad thoughts about themselves. And I pray that you will remember, that you will help them to remember how you created them. And you will not call them to do anything that you are not willing to give them what they need to accomplish that. Lord, we thank you so much that each one of us are your masterpieces. You created us with love so that we could do big things for you. Lord, I pray right now for all those boys and girls who may not have prayed and asked you to forgive them of their sin and believe that you are the Son of God and that they might want to become your child. I pray, Lord, right now that they would just pray as we pray. God, I know you love me. I know I've said or thought or done bad things. I'm sorry, Lord. I know Jesus died on the cross, shed his blood, took my punishment, but then he rose again. And I choose him to be the boss of my life so that I may become a child of you, a child of God. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done and all you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, asking Jesus to be the boss of your life, let Miss Donna know or let your mom and dad know first and then your grandpas and grandmas and all your family because that's what we need to do. We need to tell others so that others will know what God can do for them. Have a great week, boys and girls. Next week, we're going to be learning about the crazy story of To God Be the Glory. Come back and see us then. Love each one of you. Have a great week in school. I pray that God will protect and guide you in the decisions that you make. See you next week. Bye-bye.